The Mandate and the Mission, Exodus 18. Opening message of Reverend Edmund Chan during the 2013 Global Discipleship Congress in Ortigas, Philippines. So his message was entitled The Mandate and the Mission, taken from Exodus 18. In his summary, he says, We are a compulsively driven generation. Caught in a performance trap where work is our identity, we are busy but lost. In our chronic business, we end up majoring on the minor. We often find ourselves in the thick of thin things. More significantly, we have missed the mandate, our walk with God, while pursuing the mission, our work for God. Before we read the selected passage, let's go over some introductory points that he raised in his message. He asked, what is the major crisis our churches are facing today? So among financial concerns and political issues, the church is facing a major crisis today, and that is leadership. For example, quite a number of church leaders fail in some leadership attributes like proficiency, determination, communication skills, and commitment to intentional discipleship. Lastly, good leaders produce good leaders, but the same can be said to bad leaders. So Pastor Chan opened the Congress with a message on discipleship as seen in Exodus 18. He said that the passage teaches us not only about leadership, but also about discipleship. So just a brief backdrop before we read the text. In Exodus 18, the Israelites have already fled Egypt and are now in the desert as a growing community. Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, visited him to see what was going on. And let's read from verses 13 down to 23. Please hit pause as you read the passage along. So Pastor Chan identifies for us four leadership problems in this passage, namely Moses' perceived indispensability, people's learned helplessness, inevitable exhaustion of the leader in the community, and eventual unsustainability of leadership endeavors. First, Moses was flooded with requests and queries and disputes by the community and the sheer volume of these matters took a toll on his time, most likely his energy as well. Nobody was there to assist Moses, and probably the people did not want to go um, seek counsel or assistance from anybody else. They were becoming dependent and helpless. The passage also presents us with a serious impact of the situation to the leadership of Moses. Jethro says, You and these people who come to you will only wear yourselves out. In verse 18. Lastly, such a case will eventually become unsustainable for Moses to do it alone. So, Pastor Chan identifies these four areas of leadership in Moses' time, and they could also well characterize the leadership issues our church leaders are facing today. To address the issue, Pastor Chan suggests that church leaders follow three simple principles of delegation. Number one is letting go and church leaders should stop playing ecclesiastical monopoly in the church and let go of other tasks that swam their desk. Church leaders need to learn to trust lay people and involve them in church affairs with full trust in what they can do. Number two is selection. Jethro also advised Moses to identify capable men in the community, those who possess leadership qualities and credibility once selected, Moses is then to appoint them as leaders and function as permanent leaders of their respective circles. Lastly is non-abdication. This principle involves deciding which issues are major and minor so that the leader focuses only on the major and the appointees on the minor, just like what Jethro advised Moses. And this doesn't mean that the leader abandon his responsibility and take a holiday. The text also underscores two major leadership roles. In verse 19, Jethro advises Moses to act as the people's representative before God. He also describes di discipleship by telling Moses to teach them the decrees and laws and show them the way to live and the duties they are to perform in verse 20. 
Pastor Chan proceeds by saying that delegation is knowing one's God-given role and responsibility and focusing on it, making it one's major. Everything around you that seems to distract you from that major role needs to be assigned to someone else. Now that we have identified the problems involved in our leading, and now that we have gleaned the principle of delegation from the Bible text, where do we strike the balance between doing it because we want to accomplish what we want to do and doing it because we are walking with the Lord? The answer is Pastor Chan's key differentiation between our work and our walk with God. He says, our work is our mission. The things that are involved in our ministry, our goals, our objectives, etc. While our mandate is what God designed for us to do, He mandated us to worship, to have the mind of Christ, to be holy, to be intimate with Him, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to meditate on His Word, etc. So to make the difference clear, let me present to you a table with the components making up the mission and the mandate. So I really appreciate this part of Pastor Chan's message because it presents us with the radical perspective of how we conduct our leadership. All Christians are commanded to carry out the Great Commission by no other than Jesus Christ himself. In Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 to 20 he says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of age. Pastor Chan continues by saying that the Great Commission is not merely an assignment from God, but essentially an alignment to God. In this light, we have to ask the right question. Not how many leaders and disciples we have produced, but what kind of leaders and disciples we have developed. And failure to have the mandate cradle our mission will result in overcommitted but underconnected leaders like pastors and church leaders who are just tired and burnt out and sick of doing the same thing over and over. Lastly, in everything we do, we place the Great Commission at the heart of four principles. Jesus is coming soon. There is a need to spread the gospel around the world. There is a need for intentional discipleship. And there is a need for radical realignment with God.